let's go through the papers in a bit more detail. And here to do that, Sophia Warringer, political commentator with Young Voices UK. Sophia, good morning. Good morning, Rosie. Um, I hadn't mentioned the front page of the Daily Mail and my goodness, their intentions are clear. Ten days left to stop a disaster of a Starmer supermajority. Uh, what do you make of this strategy from the Conservatives that they sort of started about a week and a half ago now in this sort of last ditch campaigning effort to say, we are hoping that when you get into the ballot box, there is a part of you that thinks, do you know what? I don't want Keir Starmer to have a 200 seat majority. I'm going to vote Conservative instead. This idea of a supermajority that the Conservatives have been pushing really doesn't actually reflect how our British electoral system works. In fact, all you need is 326 seats to form a government. You don't need a supermajority. There's not such a thing as a supermajority. It is just a majority. But it's a tactic that they're using to basically concede the election and say that they need a decent-sized opposition, which is really unprecedented for a party to basically concede the result kind of two, three weeks before polling day. So it shows just how desperate they are feeling. And it shows also the power of polls to to change the direction of how politics go is going. They've seen these successive polls showing the Conservatives at record low seats. We know there's a variation in the number of seats that that predicts, but basically showing a Labour majority in all circumstances. And it shows how much that those polls dictate how the party campaigns and what messages they decide to put out. And one of the things potentially chipping away at Conservative support is the sort of newly rebooted Reform Party with Nigel Farage at the helm. But I look at the front page of The Times today, which has those comments from Nigel Farage saying, Western leaders should hold peace talks with President Putin. To what extent do you think those comments might alienate people who decided to vote reform? I think there's a chance because I think the general public are very supportive of the plight of the Ukrainians and support to Ukraine in their fight against Russia and that the British government should continue to resource them financially. So I think that this shows that as Farage moves beyond just talking about immigration and Brexit, which are the policies that he's been talking about for the past decade or so, it shows that the broader reform policy offer may not be what the public actually want. And it's interesting that he leads here with this idea that the West should negotiate a peace treaty or stop talks with Putin. Obviously, it's not the West's responsibility. It's not the skin is not in their game. You know, it's about Ukraine's decision and what they want. And if the country as a whole, if the leaders want a negotiation, that is up to them. But it's not for the West to kind of override their will and go over their head and trying to negotiate this. Is some of Nigel Farage's power is in that he talks about and asks the questions that other politicians wouldn't? Definitely. I think that's what's got him to where he is today. And I think it's not um, wrong that he's asking these questions, but I think it is out of line with, with the public mood. And I think it shows a misunderstanding of Putin and, and the fact that he thinks that you can negotiate fairly with Putin, which, let's not forget, is a man who has allegedly killed off his competitors, um, has murdered people on his command, allegedly, and has you know ruled Russia with violence and without allowing opposition. So if you think that this is someone to be negotiated with and to be trusted, it shows a certain naivety, I would say, of how... Um, international relations will work. I think that those comments are going to come under even more uh, scrutiny as the day uh, plays out. Let's talk about this, this gambling investigation. I mean, you kind of couldn't believe it. I think it was a week and a half ago now when The Guardian first led with the story that said uh, they discovered that there'd be this uptick in votes, this surprising uptick in votes about when the election would be called just a few days uh, beforehand. And now their lead story this morning is that the Prime Minister is facing quite a, a clamour to come clean about the scandal and what they say is engulfing Westminster currently. I mean, what should happen, Sophia? Normally, there's an investigation, there's due progress pr process. Right now, uh, these are, of course, just allegations, but the people being investigated, uh, some of them are on the ballot paper in 10 days' time. Yeah, they are just allegations, but interestingly, the um, officer who has been um, accused of placing a bet has been suspended, but those who are in the party or those who are indeed candidates for the Conservative Party have not been suspended. So there's a difference in approach there, which doesn't seem fair. It should be the same across the board, regardless of whether you are an officer 
um, in the police force or a member or a worker in the Conservative Party. So that does need to be consistent. And I think this is really damaging to um, Rishi Sunak, although it's not something he could have controlled happening. It's not his fault. Obviously, he can control his response. I think he probably should. Does, does it talk about the culture, the though? I think that's the, that's the concern people have, that there's this sort of, well, you know, we're sort of above above the fray we can do as as we please and no one's going to notice what we do it definitely um has connotations with partygate this idea that there's one rule for the people who are close to the center of power and one rule for everyone else and that's why it grates so much against people i think and obviously when there's money to be made off um this insider knowledge it feels even more unfair particularly when people are really struggling with the cost of living and any type of way of making money feels very unfair if it's outside of the rules mm. um so i think that it is a very damaging um, set of events and I think the culture permeates not just across the Conservative Party but unfortunately across politics in general this kind of out of touch nature that many politicians have that they think that they get special uh, consideration because of their proximity to power I think the majority of politicians and candidates are incredibly uh, full of integrity but unfortunately there are always a select few who let the rest of the cohort down the, the concern will be whether this gets wider just sort of the detail currently a dossier containing details of all bets on the date of the election that where you'd stand to win more than 199 pounds has been passed to the gambling commission by the betting companies and in, in Investigators are currently sifting through a spreadsheet supposedly of hundreds of names to identify gamblers who were employed by the Conservative Party or had ties to someone who was. So obviously if that investigation continues, they may find nothing, um, but more names uh, may emerge, which is exactly what the Conservative Party would want to uh, avoid. There'll be more on that a little bit later today as well. Now, inside the Telegraph, I, I wonder if you think this is a fair story, uh, Sophia. Um, several of the papers, and it's sort of not surprising that the Telegraph have sort of gone quite big on this, um, have made the point that the Green Party co-leader has still got a gas boiler. Tell us why this is important. Well, it's important because the Green Party have gone big on their um, decision to uh, reduce the use of gas boilers. And she says, uh, Carla Denya, the leader of the Green Party, is also a candidate and um, to be the uh, Green Party um, MP in Bristol Central. She says she's in the process of getting quotes for an air source heat pump. So she says she's in the process of removing this gas boiler. But it, the reason why it's so important is because it shows how unobtainable and how ex expensive a lot of the green policies that they propose as a party are and if even their own leader who you think would be a fully signed up member to the vision of the party and fully behind all the policies I presume she wrote most of these policies if she can't implement it then it shows how impossible it will be for the ordinary person to implement it who may not fully support the vision in quite the same wholehearted way how unobtainable it will be and how expensive mm. it will be so I think it shows that it's not a very realistic policy and it shows hypocrisy we're talking about a gambling problem in the Conservative Party but I think there's hypocrisy in lots of other parties too where there's a, a feeling that the the people have to do one thing but the leaders of the party can do something else. She says I'm literally getting quotes for replacing it with an air source heat pump and she said those quotes are in her email inbox. As we mentioned her constituency very quickly just to tell you who else is running there. Uh, Robert Clark is running for Reform UK, Nicholas Coombs for the Liberal Democrats, Thangham Debonair for the Labour Party and um, Carla Denya for the Green Party as we've just been discussing, Kelly J Keane for the Party of Women and Samuel Williams for the Conservatives. Um, away from the election, Sophia, there's quite a lot of other exciting things happening. Number one, it is finally getting a little bit hotter. And of course, the Euros is on. England pay tomorrow. Scotland, obviously, heartbreak yesterday. According to The Guardian and this story, um, some of us might be ill this week. This was a very British story. They were warning that there might be an increase in the number of people who are working from home on Wednesday following the England-Slovenia game tomorrow evening and also coinciding with what would be record temperatures for the year so far, which may rise to kind of early 30 degrees across the UK. I think this is, uh, yeah, pulling together two things that Brits love, which is not coping well with the heat and nursing a hangover after a football game so it shows that I don't think that we have a very good resilience in dealing with things like that maybe it's because it's so rare it doesn't happen that often I just um, wonder how uh, many British people story. 
will be out of your office on Wednesday morning. It would make me really annoyed if people decided not to come in. Sophia, once, I remember as a, when I was working in television, I was asked to go out on Oxford Circus for Black Friday and interview loads of people about kind of what kind of hot deals they got. And the biggest challenge I had in getting people to come and say what they bought was that they didn't want to go on the TV to tell anyone because they'd pulled a sickie to go out to Black Friday so therefore couldn't appear on the television. I couldn't believe it. Oh, right, right. Well, people obviously got a, a, a um, I don't know how to describe it. They uh, When they take their fancy, sometimes they take a day off. So maybe that will happen on Wednesday as well. Uh, Sophia, thank you so much. Sophia Warringer, uh, political commentator with Young Voices UK, going through the stories inside the papers this morning.